everybody. Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live. This is Maddie from Close Smart, and I thought I would just show you a quick little project that we have. It's a quick little project to use for a gift, but it's also really great to sew if you want to learn Close Smart or if you maybe have a grandchild or a child that wants to learn or a beginner sewer. It's a great project to teach. So um, I Glad you're joining us and I will show you this and you can get this online if you order you get one of these panels for free with your order and you can also order additional ones for two dollars each so the first thing I'm going to do is cut out this blossom on the circle and then I'm going to take a small piece of fabric well, let me show you what we're making first here we're making a little pot holder like this okay so to do that we're going to take a small piece of fabric and put it behind the circle. I've already cut a slit in it and now I'm going to cut out the circle and I'm just going to put a little slit in the line there. There is a little line there if you can't see it just believe me. There's one there. And then I'm just going to cut around this little circle and what the interfacing does for you is and by the way we're putting it rough side of interfacing to right side of fabric. What the interfacing does is it's going to give you really great curves. So they aren't going to be, you know, you're not using any needle turning or there's the circle. You're not using any needle turning. You're not um, using freezer paper and you're still going to get a really great curve. And one way you do this, you just simply turn it. And then the pointer creaser that I have here is going between the fabric of the seams, not between the interfacing but between the fabric seam and you end up getting a really great circle. So the next step is you have your blossom cut out. And so what you're gonna do for that is put that on another piece of fabric. And we've already done that where we've, or done where we've stitched around on the solid line. So it's gonna be the same technique. The next thing we're gonna do is cut on the dash line and I'm going to give that over to Trevor here, who's helping me. And he's going to cut that while um, I show you the other side of the pot holder. Okay, thanks, Trevor. Mm -hmm. And the other side of the pot holder is this grid. And it has sewing lines on it. Our grids that we sell do not have the sewing lines. This is, I would call this sort of a... Um, way to teach people a learning technique. What we found is that on the grids that have the sewing lines, it's more confusing to people as on the big grids as to where to put the squares. So this makes it really easy for um, a, somebody to learn with the sewing lines and it makes it really easy for somebody who's also going to do this like as a gift. So what you're going to do is put your square right between these dots and this piece is already done a little bit. And so what this piece we've done is you've got them all fused on and we've uh, put them between the center lines. You can see that it doesn't have to be like super accurate. Um, and then what you do is you press the seams one way or you clip and you can clip and have your intersections go the other way. That's how we teach for our Mondo bag and our new have to have it bag. But in any case, you fold right on that dotted line and then you've got a line to stitch on. So how easy is that? Now the really cool thing, so here's one done. Here's one seam done. So the really absolutely cool thing is you get absolutely perfect, I'll point to those, intersections. And that happens without even trying. I mean that's what that's what is just so cool about this. It, you don't even need to try to do that and you get that. Okay? So how are you doing over there Trevor? Almost done. He's almost done. So what I'm going to do is show you some of the uh, some of the little projects that we have here made with this. So this one is a set of two placemats. And um, after you have the blossom done, what you do is you fuse it to a background. Now on this one, I use the silver uh, stuff that the metallic stuff that doesn't. Um, it's good for the iron. Uh, and and, and uh, it's heat resistant. That's the word I'm trying to come up with. <laughs> heat resistant. And you can see, I hope on here, I've done this with a um, 
with a colored thread you can also use a zig an invisible thread but the way that i like to stitch this is completely on the applique except for the needle is just going in the background and the reason for that is when you go to do things like double wedding ring you and you if you want it to look like it's been pieced uh by hand <laughs> or, or by machine um, then it does, it kind of rolls into the background. So it's a really nice stitch. And I use a, when you're starting out, use a 2.2, I mean, I'm sorry, a 2.0, 2.0 millimeter for length and width, because it's easy to remember and it's a nice stitch. As you go further, you might want it just a little tiny bit longer, um, a 2.5 length and a 1.5 width is my favorite stitch. Um, but do what's comfortable for you and you're also going to be zigzagging on the circle there and then if you want to don't have to you can zig or you can stitch here and that would separate the little petals so this set i've used the blossom on one side and i've used the squares on the other so that the both of the back sides thanks trevor mm -hmm. so both of the back sides are just a um, background fabric but the other way that you can do it, and this is nice for a class, is to do both sides. So, and you know, if you're teaching, tell your students that there's no rule that that blossom has to be in the center. Uh, it could even be offset. Um, here's another one where I took a four patch and um, put the put the blossom on top of that and then did a lot of quilting. So it's also a really good project to learn some quilting. And there's the back of that with some more quilting. So Trevor has this done. So I will show you how to turn this now um, so that you can see it in real life. Oh, he also has clipped in between the little um, arch there. And the reason that this is important is because it makes it so that you get a real nice uh, angle there. And you're just turning it right around like this. And then again, you would finish with the pointer creaser. Trevor's our printer, and I had to have him not print today and come into the studio to help here with this, which he's more than happy to do. All right, Trevor. Every day. Every day. Do you hear that, everybody? <laughs> all my employees, no, all my team, full of alacrity. <laughs> And Lavelle is behind the camera here. Hello. Mm -hmm. All right, so look at that. Isn't that nice? And so what you would do with that next is you would take your flower and your little circle and you would take the background, nine inch background, and you would put that blossom just wherever you want it. And you would fuse that down. And I'm using the iron backwards. And just fuse that down. Just remember there is going to be a seam allowance. So like this one would be really close to the seam allowance. So you might not want that. Um, and you put the circle wherever you want it. It doesn't actually have to be in the center. Um, I keep wanting to make one of these with white and yellow because I think it would look like fried eggs. <laughs> All right, so that's what it is. And then you would do that zigzag around. Um, okay, just like this. And I just wanted to show you one more. This one is done with chenille. When you're using the interfacing, you could actually use different fabrics because the interfacing uh, kind of acts as a stabilizer. So that's a really nice thing that you can do with these two where um, you could use silk. You want to use an applique pressing sheet if you're doing that. So this one in particular, I zigzagged this and I put the little um, pieces between the, made them look like little pieces by stitching between the petals. And then on the back side, that's used as quilting. So we quilted this right through it. So lots of different options you could use if you're a shop and you wanna use this as a teaching uh, project for your students, you can use it. If you belong to a guild and you wanna share this with everybody. So uh, we're pretty open to uh, letting these go out for those kinds of teaching opportunities because I really love people learning to quilt. So let us know uh, if you're a grandma and you have some grandkids, you might have quilt camp, this is great for that. In any case, that's our pot holder. And uh, we also call it our fusible brochure. It's got all the instructions on it and it's a great way to start to quilt smart.